This is a simple cartoony shader in Blender. It works by taking incoming light and breaking it into discrete bands of shade across the surface. And there are countless tutorials that show you how to make this kind of material. You take a diffuse shader, convert it to RGB, run it through a color ramp mode, set up the gradient how you want it, then multiply it with your actual texture you're trying to use. And there's your tune shader. But this particular approach has a limitation and I don't see a lot of people addressing or talking about it. These tune shaders don't react to colored lighting. Any scene with dynamic changes in color or lighting now all has to be done and managed by hand. But this doesn't have to be the case. You can just as easily achieve the same cartoony effect without having to lose the power of lighting. And today I'm going to show you a better method for tune shaders. You see, the issue is here using the color ramp. A color ramp takes a float value and outputs a color, and that's where the problem is. A float is a one-dimensional scalar value, it's a magnitude. A color, on the other hand, is vector, consisting of three separate scalar components. By plugging an RGB into the input, the color has to be converted into a single value. What this means is we need a different approach. The easiest way to go about doing this is to replace the color ramp node with a color curve node. The color curve gives us a linear graph of the color balance from the shader. If we break this graph into steps, we can see that the lighting also becomes broken into distinct bands of light, giving the same effect as the color ramp, but with the added benefit of now being able to use colored lights. This also has an interesting effect on in how lights now interact. If we cycle through color on a bright lamp, we can see how the color channels contributes to the overall lighting of the surface, growing and fading as the colors change. But you could also argue that this makes things muddy and might not be the effect you're looking for. What we're really trying to do is simplify the brightness of our colors, not so much the colors themselves. So what's the simplest way to do that? Well, color can be represented in more ways than just RGB. It can also be represented by hue, saturation, and value. And it works like this. Hue represents our color spectrum and saturation determines how full the colors are. Value, on the other hand, determines how bright these colors are. Which means if we can find a way to control this, we can get our desired effect. And fortunately for us, we have a node that lets us directly manipulate these values with the separate color node and combine color node. With our shader now running through this node setup, we can change the color space to HSV and we can pull from the shader's value directly. If we add a flow curve to our value, we can start adjusting our shadows this way, the same as we did with our color curve. This time when lights change color, there is no banding effect from the individual RGB values. It stays consistent and gives us a simple shading effect without the artifacting. I feel this method is a much better alternative than what's often shown through YouTube algorithms. It provides a way of simplifying shadows, but not at the cost of losing the power of lighting, which I feel is very important for setting the mood of a composition. As a basis, there's a lot more you can do with it to give you even more to work with. For instance, you can replace the diffuse shader with a principal shader, which opens up roughness, metallics, speculars, and normal maps, just to say the least. Practically everything that the principal shader has to offer, but filtered into a tune shader. I could go on forever about how to expand this simple shader, but honestly, I think I'll just leave it here for now. I hope you found this interesting or informative. Leave a like if you did, and subscribe if you'd like to see more like this. If you have any questions or any ideas about this shader and how you could use it, be sure to leave them in the comment section down below. And with that, I think that's all I have to say. See ya!